Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. Yeah, I'm driving, riding today. I'm not driving, I'm not driving, but I'm riding. I'm riding, I'm riding, I'm riding. You see my uh, my my, uh, my fan club in the back, my uh, my background, my anthem, my acoustics. <laughs> She's in the back. State where you're coming in from. State where you're coming in from. State where you're coming in from. Good morning, good morning, good morning, J Cap. J Cap, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning. St. Louis, St. Louis, St. Louis. Amen. God bless you, God bless you. background <laughs> y'all moving today running a little late running a little behind not not really late but uh late to my destination where i'm able to just uh park and be able to minister so we was running a little behind today my wife is uh, doing the driving my uh, my uh, my chauffeur is doing the driving and so uh i'm sitting on the other side on the other side uh, relaxing and coming to you the people of god with another word, another word of encouragement uh, this morning. What it is? I don't lost my Thursday. Day. It's Thursday. Wow, it's Thursday. It is Thursday. Happy Thursday. Hello. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. Give me a few minutes before um, everyone comes in because usually sometimes the notifications usually takes about seven, eight minutes, ten minutes for people to really realize that I'm online. So I'm going to give it a few minutes and um, uh, give me a few minutes. I got something for you. I got something. It's Wednesday? Uh, Thursday. You sure? Yeah, it's Thursday. I'm not sure. It's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. We got a new baby. It's Wednesday. Now, now that was that was my wife's fault. She told me it was Thursday. I don't sleep anymore. I'm on that. <laughs> hey Amen. It is Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. Instead of Thursday, happy Wednesday. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yeah, so you say, say, say got it. J, uh, J. Kelp said, I got it. Yeah, it's Wednesday. I don't push the time back. But I didn't come up with that. Just to let you know, that, that was the wife. She said it was Thursday. That was me. <laughs> hey, man, come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Today, somebody put in the comments, somebody put in the comments, uh, humility. Somebody put in the comments, humility. Humility. And that's what God was speaking to me in in a vein of today is humbling ourselves, submitting ourselves, submitting ourselves, humility. The Bible says that humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, and in due season, He will He will do the exalting. But it comes from us submitting, humbling ourselves. Um, that's what we do. We, we, we give it to God. We give it to God and we realize that um, I don't have all answers. I can't fix this. It's gonna, it can only take God. And so, and then we say, God, I give it to you. God, I give it to you. Somebody put in the comments, humility. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. Give me a few more minutes. A few more minutes. Amen. Australia, God bless you. Australia, amen. And the title, the title of my message today, if I can say anything, the title of my message today is uh, um, your healing is coming through your humility. Your healing is coming through your humility. See, a lot of times... Good morning, good morning, Missouri. God bless you, Missouri. God bless you. 
God bless you. God bless you, Keisha. God bless you. I see you. I see you. I see you. I see you. God bless you, Natalie. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And so what, what I want to talk about, I want to talk about the heart. I want to talk about the heart. And the title of the message is um, your humility is what's going to bring your healing. Your humility. And so a lot of times we look for and we think that God is going to move in certain ways. God's going to move this way. God's going to move that way. And so a lot of times the danger is that we think that we've cornered the market and we figured out how God's going to heal how God going to move. And a lot of times we're in the way. We're in the way because of we thinking, well, well, God is going to move this way. And so, you know, so a lot of times, you know, even when we're praying for a certain blessing in the beginning stages, in the beginning stages of your blessings, oftentimes it comes with pain. In the beginning stages of your blessing or what you're asking God for, in the beginning stages, it's not going to look like, it's not going to look what you look like what you think it's going to look like. It's not at all. Just like when a, in order for a, 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 a couple to have a baby, that couple must go through uh, three processes, must go through 30, uh, 40 weeks of a lot of pain, of a lot of, a lot of stuff. And a lot of times what the, what the mother goes through, you can't see it. A lot of times what the mother goes through when that, that mother is about to have a baby, you can't see it. The pain, you can't see it. And so a lot of times what we go through when, when it comes to God, we can't see it. We can't see what God is doing because it's spiritually discerned. And it's not for us to see. It's not for us to see. That's why the Bible said the just shall live by faith. And so you're trying to look at it. You're trying to figure out what God is saying, trust me. God is saying, trust me. Somebody, somebody put in the comments, God, I trust you. That's what God is after. He's after your trust. Are you going to trust what you see? Or are you going to trust what he said? Many of you are in a situation right now. You're in a crossroad. And the question is, are you going to trust the situation? Or are you going to trust God? God is greater than the situation. God is greater than the situation. What are you going to do? And so that's the question this morning. That's the question this morning. Are you going to trust your situation? Or are you going to trust God? What are you going to do? The choice is yours. Who are you going to trust? And so that's where your deliverance is coming at. And, and just think about it. I want to give you one, one scripture. One scripture. There was this captain. This captain of, uh, of the uh, Assyria. His name was Naaman. He had leprosy. He had a condition. He had a condition. And uh, he, he went to Elijah. And he wanted Elijah to... Uh, he, he wanted Elijah to come outside and he came to Elijah's place and he wanted Elijah to come outside and be theatrical and, and do all this and go through all this then, then say you're healed. But Elijah said none of that. No, I'll just go down to the River Jordan and, and bathe a couple of times, three times and you'll be healed. But he want to do that. And so some of you, you are trying to tell God where you want to be healed at. You're trying to tell God the place that you want to be healed at. And see, see, oftentimes God will, God will send you to a dirty place. God will send you to, to something difficult. He'll send you to something, something painful. And in that pain, that's where, you, that's where your healing is at. Your healing is in your pain. Your healing is, is in the place that you don't want to go. The healing is in the, in the things that you don't want to do. That's where it's at because your healing, it, your, when, you, when God heals you, your flesh ain't going to feel good. And so a lot of times your flesh is fighting you from going in a place where God, over your healing. See, God, would you go in the place of your healing, but you don't want to do it because you think it's beneath you. You think it ain't good enough. You, you know, it's beneath you. I'm a king. I'm a queen. And say, so, but God is saying your healing is right here. Your healing is to go to that person and say, and, and, and say forgive me. Your healing is to go to that person and, and, and talk to that person. That healing is, the person is to go to that person and get that thing right, to get your heart right. To restore that, per that person that you know that you got a problem with. The Bible says when you go to your king, when you go to the master and you have a gift, the Bible says it. But if you remember that your brother have all against you, not that you got all, but if you remember that somebody got all against you, the Bible said to go lay it at the altar. And so, and so, and go lay, the, lay that gift at the altar and go be reconciled. And so many of you, you're healing, you're healing, you're healing, you're not being healed because you hadn't got that thing right. You hadn't got that, you hadn't got that first work done. You hadn't forgive. You hadn't turned from your wicked ways. See, a lot of times, a lot of times what blocks us is our wicked ways. Our wicked ways, our attitudes, our moves, how we act. But we say we saved. We say we anointed. We say we holy and all that. But we act, we act to the total opposite of what the Bible says. But then we wonder why we're not here. We wonder why our blessing hadn't come yet. It's because of us. The Bible says our greatest enemies of our own household is us, our folk. It's that wickedness, that wickedness. 
Even God, even God even told her, who was it? Solomon, when he had dedicated the house of God back to him, he said, if my people which are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. That's what he said, seek my face, turn from your wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and forgive your sins and heal your land. That's where it's at, God wants us to turn. He still wants us to turn, turn means to repent. Turn means to turn away from the a total opposite, the lifestyle, your mindset, not just your words. God just don't want your words. He wants your heart. God, God don't want to hear all that mess. He want to be. He wants you to be honest with him. He wants you to pray and sound like the Pharisee. He don't want you to sound cute. He wants you to come from your heart. That's what he's after. That's what he's after. That's what you deliver. That the deliverance is you being honest and turn. You're in a place. You're in a situation. Where your heart is broken. Your heart is going through so much, and you don't know. You don't know if you're coming or going. At this place, God wants you to turn. At this place, God say the day that you hear my voice, heart not your heart. God is speaking to you. You know about the COVID situation and what's happening uh, around the world from one man losing his life, one athlete, one icon, how it's touching so many people's hearts. It's talking to their hearts. It's talking to them. And the, the Bible said that God would have, unless God was smite the earth with a curse, he said that I'm going to send the spirit of Elijah. And the spirit of Elijah is going to turn hearts back. It's going to turn hearts back from the, uh, the fathers to the sons, to, to the wives, to the daughters. He's turning the hearts back. And so that's what's happening. God is turning your heart back. In other words, God is changing you. You want to you want to get revenge, but God is changing you. You want to cuss, you want to fight, you want to do all kind of bad things, but God is changing your heart. You want to hate, but God is changing your heart. You want to you want to do so many things, but God is changing your heart. God is touch, talking to your heart. He wants you to show mercy. That's what He's after. He wants you to show mercy. You know what? The greater and the thing that I understand, and the Bible even talks about Jesus. The Bible said when He looked at the crowd. He was moved with compassion and he healed them all. And that's what God is doing with the people of God. He's talking to our hearts in a way where he's moving us with compassion. He's making us sympathetic. He's making us empathetic because your deliverance is in your compassion. Somebody put in the comments, my deliverance is in my compassion. Somebody put in the comments, my deliverance is in my compassion. God has been talking to your heart. That's why the Bible says that uh, when you pray, go into your closet, your innermost closet and close the door. God wants you to close the door. He wants you to shut out every kind of distraction. He wants you to shut out every kind of conversation. He wants you to shut out every kind of pain. He wants you to shut out everything that will get in between you and your conversation with God. Close that door. Close that door. Close that door to pain. Close that door to those, 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 those so-called friends that are always bringing and bringing bad news. Close the door. Close the door to rebellion. Close the door to gossip. Close the door to excuses. Close the door to hurt. Close the door to, to revenge. Close the door to all of that. Close the door to all of that. And just seek God. Seek his face. And ask him to forgive you. And ask him to clean your heart. Create in me a clean heart, oh God. And renew within me a right spirit. Ask God to give you a right spirit. Somebody put in the comment, God, give me a right spirit. Give me a right spirit. Somebody put in the comment, God, give me, give me, give me. Give me a right spirit. I don't want to be wrong. See, because you know what? Sometimes, you know, we're not always right. Sometimes we wake up, our mind is wrong. Our thinking is wrong. Our, our process is wrong but God we ask God to God make my heart right make my heart right God give me a right heart give me a right spirit give me a right heart give me a right mind where I can think right where I can love right you, you know what sometimes too when when you know when you're under the rest oftentimes and sometimes we attack the people that we love don't do that don't do that say God give me a right heart give me a clean heart give me a right spirit give me the right spirit God give me the right spirit not the wrong spirit. Give me the right spirit. I got to go. But if you receive this message, somebody put in the comment, I receive this message. I receive this message. I receive this message. I receive this message. God, give me the right spirit. I don't want to be wrong. I want to love. I don't want to die. I want to die and go to hell. And so this is something too, you know, you want to get it right because, you know, today might be your day. You might go to sleep and you might, you might wake up in eternity. If you hadn't got it right, it's on you. You can't blame your mama. You can't blame the bishop. You can't blame the preacher. You can't blame nobody but yourself. You can't blame the kids. You can't blame nobody. You can't blame mama. You can't blame daddy. You can't blame nobody. It's going to be you, you, and you that's standing in the need of prayer. That's going to stand before God. It's between you and God. It's between you and God. Get it right today. Today is the day of salvation. Run. Come to Jesus. Come to him. Get it right. While the blood is running, running warm in your veins. Running warm. Amen. God bless you. got to go. <laughs>